Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are going to begin shortly. And today's topic is translation techniques for, well, not techniques, translation tools for interpreters. So I'm going to share this now. I'm not sure if we have anyone uh, watching me right now, but let's see. Okay. Trans uh, the topic is translation um, tools, online translation tools for interpreters. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me know in, in, in a comment if you're able to hear me okay, if everything is okay. And I'm going to be sharing my screen because uh, in order for you to actually see how these translation tools work, I will have to uh, share my screen. So hello everyone, again, the beginning is always a little bit awkward, but yes, let's just get started right away. Um, I'm going to share my screen now, okay? Let's see, let's go to Zoom and share my screen. So can everyone see my screen? Let me know in a comment, okay? I have my cell phone right here to read all of your comments and your questions, etc. So let me know if you can see it. Oops, can you still hear me? Let's see. Let's go to the comment. Hi, Abelardo. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. So um, where are you watching us from or watching me from? Okay, perfect, awesome. Okay, so I have a couple of translation tools and I am going to make sure that I'm only sharing my one tab at a time. Okay, so first, my this is translation tools for medical interpreters. This is something that I really like to do for all my uh, translations and oftentimes it works very 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 well so first there is medline plus in case you didn't know first we have to go to google then we go to medline plus dot gov this is an american website and um, i love this website because you can go to any topic let's say health topics um gen any topic let's go to health topics for example and they have all of this and the whole website is translated into Spanish. So this is great for English to Spanish interpreters. So let's say that I want to learn about diabetes mellitus, and then let's go to A1C. And here, as you will be able to see, there is uh, this button that says Espanol, which is Spanish. So if you click on that button, it's going to take you to the exact same page but in Spanish. So here, if you notice, let me know, can you see the, the URL in here? And let me just open the chat over here. Okay, perfect. So are you, you see this little URL? It says medlineplus.gov slash Spanish slash A1C dot HTML. So oftentimes, you are able to figure out the Spanish version of a website by using this, um, this um, slash in Spanish. Of course, each website has different naming and because they, it depends on the programmer, but this is a very good way to know if something is available in another language. So that's Medline Plus, and I'm also going to send that on the chat here. And we have my cat, it seems like he wants, he wants to learn about this too. I'm going to make my cat popular someday. <laughs> okay, so let me just share this in here, in the chat, medlineplus.gov. So you can go ahead and, and share that. Um, okay, so going back to this. So this is my first translation um, tool. And also, most of the times the translation in here are pretty good. They're okay, they're decent, they're not too bad. They're very basic though. And sometimes they make some mistakes. Um, you know, 
so you always have to bear in mind the context where in which you are translating the phrase the situation because this is um a website which is like um written information it's not oral um language right that's my website number one my website number two is mayo clinic so you go to google again and then you do mayo clinic okay and um, allow me one second. I'm going to split my screen so I'm able to see your comments and all. Oops. Okay. So here you go to Mayo. Sorry, guys. Okay, you go to Mayo Clinic and they have something very cool in here, which I really, really like. And you can go to any topic. Right, it's just like Medline Plus, but it's a little bit more um, complex. They, their information is more thorough, more, more medical specific. So let's go to health information. Let's go to diseases from A to Z, right? And let's go to, I don't know, let's go to the letter D, dandruff, right? And here it says everything about dandruff. I like that they have symptoms and causes, diagnosis and treatments. And sometimes they have like this series of, of tabs, which medical information about that um, particular disease, which is pretty cool. And then in here, if you can see this in here, they have the language selection button. So if you click here, they have Spanish, Portuguese, Arabic, and I'm not sure whether this is Mandarin or Japanese. Maybe somebody in the chat will, will help us with that in the, on the live stream. Okay, so just allow me one second here. I'm trying to get to be able to see your comments at the same, at the same time. Okay, so very well. Now, let's say that I choose, I don't know, Arabic. And that way you're going to get all the exact information, but in Arabic. And this is something that you could do, for example, I don't know how to say flaking of dandruff. I know that it is on their diagnosis and treatment, treatment, so the itching and flaking of dandruff. Okay, so I have to find that paragraph in the other, um, in the Arabic version. And that's where you find some tricky terms, okay? You always have, you have to be careful, not all of the times they have the same term. So you always have to, you know, keep an eye on it. So I'm going to share the, the link in here. Okay, there we go. And then let, that's my resource number two. For my resource number three, I like to use MSD manuals. So let's go to Google again. Let's go MSD manuals. And there are two versions of MSD manuals. There is a professional version and there is a consumer version. So what does this mean? Let's see. So for example, this is the professional version. As you can see, everything is blue in here, right? Like, um, yeah, kind of bluish. But if you click on view the consumer version, they have is the same, but in red. So that's a very good way of distinguishing. And what's the difference? Well, the professional version, the text and topics are geared towards medical professionals, like medical doctors and um, surgeons. It's very complex, very, very specific, very, very dense. So if you go to the consumer version, it's going to be more like you are going to actually encounter in a medical appointment. I do the same thing and um, they have health topics, symptoms, emergency. I believe the best between MSD manuals, um, Mayo Clinic, I, I'm sorry, between Medline Plus, Mayo Clinic, I prefer MSD manuals because the information is more thorough. So let's go to letter H, for example. I want to, let's see, um, head injuries. So let's see cerebs, cerebral, oh my God, my English, cerebral contusions and lacerations. So if you click on select language, I'm going to point it out again, this thing up here. 
If you click there, it's going to give you the same option. So uh, German, Spanish, French, it has more variety than, than Mayo Clinic. So I really like this. Uh, so let's say I want to see the French version and the same thing happens. It's the same, the same logic, right? Okay. So my other resource, uh, oh, and I'm going to send this on the chat. My other resource is, what other page can I do this in? Oh, yes, health info translations. I love health info translation because they have a lot of medical forms like um, site translation forms that are given to patients and they have, they have it in different languages. So let's go to health info translation here. Here, you can see, you can search a term, any term. You can select by health topic like home care, pediatrics, pain and comfort, etc. But you can, and you can select by language. They have like a lot of, I think languages of lesser diffusion like Nepali, Swahili, Tagalog, etc. So let's say that I want to say that I want to find something about um, injuries, right? They have, they have the same exact form for different languages. So let's say I want to go, let's say I want to do Somali, right? Let's see what they have in Somali. They have all of this in Somali. So let's say that I want to do your hospital care after surgery. Here, first, you're going to see the document. It's a PDF. You can actually download it, print it, etc. And then you are going to study this, right? And in the next page, they have the Somali version. In your case, it will be Spanish, French, whatever. And health info translation is good. But it's a very good starting point, but I don't feel like the translations are super, super well done or professional. They, they have some mistakes here and there, but nothing too serious. But this is a very good, this is very good for site translation, okay? Okay. Um, and then my other resource, which is, it's called two lingual. And I'm going to send you health info translations on the chat. Okay, let's see health info translations. Here is in the chat. Okay, and now there is another um, tool that is called two lingual. So two lingual is fantastic. I absolutely love two lingual because it's like a Google engine, like a search engine, but it searches in both languages at the same time. So for example, I want to do, an, I want to find an English term. I want to find um, Arabic, Bulgarian. They have a lot of languages. This is definitely the, the broadest one. So let's say I want to find Vietnamese and I hear um, neck, uh, I'm sorry, a sprain or a strain. Let's say something like that. So it, it searched in, in Google, it searched in English, all the websites that include that word and in Vietnamese, all the websites that include those words, but in Vietnamese. And it could be the translation of the English um, site. So this is pretty, pretty um, helpful. And I'm also going to send it. And remember, always bear in mind the context these are just, I have seen a lot of translations in here that are not necessarily very well because it's just a search engine. Um, it's not like going to MSD manuals and knowing that it was translated by a professional. It's just what everyone posts online, but it also, it's also a very good starting point. So there you go. I sent you that resource. And then um, another fantastic resource that I like is called, um, What's, what's the name? Oh, it's called Ngram. So are you following me? Am I going too fast? Do you have any questions before we move on to Ngram, which is like a little different. It's not so much translation, but like term comparison. Are you still with me? Hmm. Oh, 
okay. So I'm assuming that you are still with me. Okay, so um, yeah, so Ngram is another fantastic um, tool. What it does is that it compares terms um, and their usage. So you want to know, sometimes you have two translations for the same term and you don't know which one will be better. So, or, or which one is the more neutral or the more used. So here, for example, I am going, and they have several languages. They have English, um, British, American, um, fiction, Chinese, French. So let's say I want to do Spanish, right? And they have the dates in here. They have, you can pick a particular date from, they have from the 1800s to 2019. So let's say from 2000, oops, sorry. Let's say from 2000 to 2019 in the last 20 years, right? And now I have to compare two terms. So I'm going to do, for example, jeringa. I, I apply the comma, you know, I type in my comma and then jeringuilla. So which one could be more common? Hmm, let's see. Which one do you think is more common before Engram tells us? For the Spanish speakers, which one do you think is more common, jeringa or jeringuilla? It's like the, the needle. Let's see. Which one is more common between those two? Hmm. I'm going to give you like one minute to think. Which one could be more common? Okay, I guess that's a difficult one. So we, we will just move on. So let's see which one is more common. According to this, jeringa is more common, okay? That's what apparently jeringa is more common, but in the Dominican Republic, to me, jeringuilla is more common to me. I, jeringa, I don't know, it's, it sounds like something is missing. It's like the guilla is missing for me. I don't know, but anyways. Uh, but as, as you can see, both of them are fairly used. They are like pretty similar, right? Um, but for example, if this is like below here, like just a flat line, oops, that's not so flat. Okay, if it's just a flat line, huh, maybe it's not used at all or not that much, right? So definitely jeringa. But if, if we have like this difference in here that is not like, well, it's a pretty big difference, but not necessarily like one is better and the other is worse. We could decide like depending on the context of the situation, which one we will use, right? Okay, also bear in mind that um, this is taken from written text, not oral language, right? So all of this is like, it's taken from Google Books, I think, because the, here in the name, it says Google Books Engram Viewer. So you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Okay, so, that's my other resource. Um, let me think, do I have any other resources? So we talked about MSD manuals, um, Mayo Clinic, Medline Plus, Health Info Translations, um, Trilingual, and Google Ngram. So I know that, oh, there is another resource. It's called Uglish. Um, and I'm also going to send you this on the chat. It's called Uglish, and I totally love it because it's like a, a YouTube search engine, but for oral for speech, for, for oral words. So sometimes there are some words that for some reason you don't know how to pronounce. And maybe you look up the phonetic spelling, but it does, it's not very clear. So when you do the Uglish search, is what it's going to do, for example, if I don't know how to pronounce um, I don't know, um, there, there was this app, uh, diabetes, this. I can pick, for example, uh, um, I can pick all English, all variations of English, US English, UK English, Australian English with the accent. And then it's going to give me these videos that include all of these terms from like real life speech. And then I have this button in here. 
down here is like a next. So I can just keep going and going and going until the word pronunciation stick with me, right? And then they also have this, oops. And they also have this in Arabic, Chinese, French, German, they have a lot, and they even have sign language, which is pretty cool. So let me just share that with you, okay? So yes, so these are my resources, but I also bear in mind that these are just, um, first, this, this is written language and the context is so important. We really have to figure out the context. Uh, we really have to think about um, the scopus, which is the function, like um, what the, what's the purpose of this phrase of, or this word? Um, how does it fit in its context? So it's not like a match, like, okay, Mayo clearly has it this way, so it must always be this way. No, it will not always be like that, but it's a very good starting point. And also, um, there are some languages that do not have these resources available, like for example, Urdu or, 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 or Thai. Sometimes it is very, very difficult. In those instances, you will have to learn about translation techniques because you will have to be more creative. It's going to take um, more work from your part to be able to come up with correct translations because you, don't, you cannot find these useful resources that for example, Spanish interpreters have to be able to, okay, so I get a sense of where this is going. If all of these websites say that glucose is glucosa, then maybe like it is but for other languages, you have to really work hard. So that's why I think Spanish interpreters, you should be grateful for all the resources that you have. <laughs> and and it's, it's like, for us, we got it easy. Okay, so um, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Um, which one do you prefer? Which, which website do you see yourself using the most? M MSD manuals, Mayo Clinic, uh, Medline Plus, Health Info Translations, Tulingual, or Youglish? Let me know in the chat. We have 10 minutes. We covered a lot in just 20 minutes. I'm reading your comments. And Gustavo said Heringa. Gustavo guessed it. You were right. <laughs> it was Heringa. So let's see, any comments, any questions? What would you like the next um, live session to be about? Oh, well, well there's something else that I wanted to tell you as well, now that I think about it. Um, if you go to Google, every time you do a Google search, oh, Google, I'm sorry, that's what I type. okay. Every time you go to Google, um, you have to know the location of your Google, for example. They have it like um, Latin America, United States, Mexico. You know, you can do a simple Google search and see what's come up, you know, what comes up, because sometimes like um, the phrases are completed and such, so that, that's sometimes, that's helpful sometimes. So let's see, what else can I think about? I think also another great resource is talking to colleagues, um, discussing the term. Um, for example, I really like that on Intercomed, we have an Arabic group, we have a Spanish group, and they meet, right? And then we have all of, all of these varieties of Spanish and, oh, and Arabic, and they brainstorm together and come up with um, translations that will be very hard to get otherwise. Um, especially when we talk about language neutral Spanish, when you have someone from like Costa Rica, uh, Mexico, Peru, even American Spanish, like from the United States, it's quite different. Um, so it's always a very good idea to talk to colleagues about that and ask questions, ask, uh, ask around, uh, you can always, ask um, questions in our 
Facebook group, you know, on inter medical interpreters of InterpreMed. I highly recommend you to do that because I really love that. I love the, the discussion. So let's see. Oh, let me see the chat. Uh, Kelly says, I just tuned in. Um, are all of these medical terminology resources, what about for idiomatic expressions? Oh my God, Kelly, that's such a good question. Mm, why, why I didn't say that sooner. Okay, for, for the um, resources for um, idioms, so I mean, here, I love this, is tourang.com. And this is the best of the best for idioms. And they, they have, I think this is a Turkish website originally, but they have French, Spanish, German, and they even have, have English synonyms. I haven't checked that one. But for example, um, estirar la pata o algo. I do that search, right? And I have all of these. They tell me if it's a slang, colloquial, etc. And it's so, so it's fantastic. And I'm sorry, there is a delay between the comments. And so I don't know, maybe that's going on. So let's see, let me see in the chat, all the comments in here, because I know Gustavo asked a question. Uh, I believe that the question was, if I use Merck manuals, I think Merck manuals and MSD manuals are the same, aren't they? I thought so. Let's see, Merck, oh my God, Merck manuals. Yes, Merck manuals is the same as MSD. I use MSD because that's easier uh, to pronounce for me, but it's also Merck manuals. I believe so. They have the same logo. And let me see, Kelly says, I love discussing terminology on Facebook groups but I definitely find the interpreter Spanish chat to be super responsive. Yes. I like, yeah, you should, we have a chat for interpreter members and we um, discuss a lot of terminology. And sometimes we even talk about terms like modern slang terms like Karen. What is a Karen? How will you say it in Spanish? Um, and we talk about pretty much everything, which is pretty cool as well. Thank you for pointing that out, Kelly. And touring has saved my life, definitely. Okay, any other comments or questions would you have? We just have five minutes left. So let's see, I will give you some minutes. Maybe you are typing something and I don't want to like interrupt your train of thought. Hmm. So what could be the next live session about? Or what could it be about? How would you feel about Lingui? Okay, so Lingui, I like Lingui. I used to use um, Lingui a lot in the past, but um, I, I feel like two lingual is better, you know, because, because Lingui, for example, is the, the translations are so awkward sometimes. And I have noticed that um, it's not, for me, it's not that helpful. I, I, I prefer to search the term on um, in here. So this is something that I should have said at the beginning because as you know, as you ask me questions, Kelly, you always like light my bulb or something, my light bulb. <laughs> okay, so for example, if you go to Google, if you want to find a term or anything, um, let's say I want to find, how do you say hypochondriac? And then I do MSD manuals. MSD manuals is going to tell me, it's going to show up all of the pages that include that term. And then I go directly to that link instead of going to the health topics library. And then in here, I can just do the same thing. And the same applies to everything, to Medline Plus, to Mayo Clinic. And it's going to give you the, um, the terms. I think this is more practical than going one by one finding it. How do you feel about Lingui, Kelly? <laughs> Did I hurt your feelings? <laughs> the comments are a little slow. I'm going to refresh my page. Let's see what's going on. Let's see the comments.
Okay, do you have so now let, let's think about huh, let's think about our next live session. What would you like our let our next live session to be about? I'm thinking about translation techniques or I don't know, what are your burning questions? Kelly says, you also show me Google engrams. Yes, that's right. And this is, if you have any engrams, it's fantastic. Like I, now I have this like set of system, like I go through all of these pages, like a checklist. And that's how I <laughs> figure out my translation. Um, I feel like I'm cheating sometimes because I'm not creating everything like from scratch, like um, Arabic interpreters do or other languages. So, but what are your techniques? Is, are there, are there any online translation tools that I that you use that I didn't mention, but you really like to use? Let me know. Salma says, I love the engrams too, thanks. Yes, awesome. It will be so cool to have a, like a, um, a program that will allow you to compare like um, uh, Spanish from the different platforms, like for example, Spanish from Mexico, from Colombia, from Dominican Republic, and then see all of these things compared. That would be pretty cool, but I don't think it, that exists yet. So let's see, and Kelly says, Engram was so helpful for me to find the most common translation for choking hazard or hazard. Hmm. Good. I remember that one. Me and Kelly and I, we, we like sometimes argue like, no, 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 it is this term. And she's like, no, 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 it is this term. And, we, and when we cannot um, like select one, decide on one, then we go to Engram and then we prove our intellectual superiority supported by Engram. So <laughs> that's how Kelly and I do it. Um, Salma says, it showed me how old my French is. Oh, um, well, you know, this is always good to know because sometimes, sometimes we're interpreting for people who, um, for, for the elderly, right? And they use words that are like, you, you never rarely like ever hear. And when you hear them, it's like the, it throws you off. I remember that this um, very old lady told me, sí, porque me aporreo. And I was like, ma'am, um, I'm sorry. What do you mean by aporrear? But then she told me, and I was like, oh, of course. But that word hasn't come up in like, in, I haven't heard that word like in 10 years, you know? <laughs> so it was pretty interesting. Um, and Salma says, for Arabic, I rely on prosy Arab dict. Okay, so let's see. Let's see Arab dict, because I always see you using that on the Arabic team. Oh my God, my, oh yeah, my, my mouse is just, okay, let's see, Arab dict. Oh yes, so arabdict.com, hmm, okay. English, Arabic, French, oh, that's cool. It's a great start, exactly. All of these translation tools are a good start. They're not like the definitely, like what it says here is like written on stone and you cannot change it. No, it's, it's just a good start to get your creative translation juices going, right? And then Kelly says, prosy kudos, a uh, prosy kudos is a good source for hard to find technical terms. Yes, um, too. Let me see. Let's go to prosy. Prosy kudos. I used to use prosy, but then um, I don't know. You know, I think everyone we have our, our own preference with some um, online tools because we have our own like translation process, I believe. Um, so I used to um, use prosy a long time ago, but I really like when they have terms like rosadura, erupción, and what I really like is the comment section as well. Like everyone adds their translation and their opinion, and I really, really like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, so thank you so much everyone for joining today. I'm going to stop sharing now. 
because it is 4.32. I'm going to give um, Facebook a few minutes to broadcast what I'm saying and then um, maybe I'll read your comments. I hate it because Facebook doesn't, is that the comments and the videos are not synchronized. So it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, follow. But maybe next time we could do it on YouTube. Maybe that could be better. Hmm. Who knows? So just to finish up, um, did you have any comments? Uh, do you have any idea of what would you like the next live session to be about? I have asked that question like three times already, <laughs> but we could do translation techniques. Um, yeah, we could do that. We could have like a small practice session. Who knows? Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the video of myself on, on Facebook and then I can see where you are at right now because there is a delay. Salma says, techniques sound good. Okay. Yeah, translation techniques. I remember we did like um, a series of webinars about that at the beginning of InterpreMed, but I think it would be very good to revisit um, those things and like doing do them again. Definitely, it was a very good experience. So I'm going to go everyone. I'm sorry if I left anyone with your questions hanging or something, but next time we will see each other and keep on translating and interpreting. See you next time. Bye everyone. Oops, there is a question, so I'll stay. <laughs> so let's see. Um, Aya Omran says, how can I find a practice group for English Arabic interpretation? So we actually have an Arabic group on interpretment.com. So I'm going to reply and you feel free to go to interpretment.com. Um, is of course, it is a paid membership, but we have a very, very active group. Um, our interpreters, they meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays and um, Sundays, and they translate all, a lot of materials together. So I highly recommend this group of committed and, and passionate interpreters, of course. So let me just send you a reply. I sent you the link. And then somebody says, um, let's see, let's see. Comments, comments, comments. And Francesca says, please let me know when you do it next time. Sure, Fran Francesca, I will let you know. I will let you all know on Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, uh, follow me on my page and our Facebook group, Medical Interpreters of Interpretment.com. So yes, that's how we do it. Thank to, thanks to you, Aya. So see you next time, for real. Bye.